If you ever wanted to record events on your microcontroller but you had an issue because your microcontroller had reset or had the trouble, there is a way using a small image port for less than $1 to record this event and also including the time and the date. So as you can see here, my event example is just put it pushing this blue button and this show that there is a new record and including the time and the date. I added also a small navigation to see each time I have pushed this button. And you can see also, even I push the reset button, I can still have see the total record without losing any of the data. So if you would like to know ab more about that, just follow this example. This is a real example and get ready to learn how to use a time data logger with the STM32F1. As usual, the code that we are going to share is available on GitHub, you can find the link in the description below. The language that we are going to use is C, the program to code is scale version 5. Finally, if you would like to know more about this code and to recreate it from scratch, you can take a look to the Wii tutorials where we do all the APIs for the I2C communication and also for the drivers. So the hardware that we are going to use is the blue pill or the STM32 F1 based blue board. The image board, which is a, which has two chip, the EEPROM memory, the AT24C32, and a real time clock, which is a DS3231. Finally, for the visualization, we are going to use the OLED screen SSD1306. So this tutorial, or this example actually, is a part 3 of an EEPROM tutorial where we start really from scratch understanding how this EEPROM is working and then create the time data logger from scratch and this is the example where we can directly use it and understand how to, to, how to extend this library. Okay, so before jumping to the circuit, I would like to share with you a little bit how this time data logger is working. So the ATC24C32, which is the EEPROM memory that we are going to use, have 32k um, a kilobit of memory. And this memory is divided to byte, so you do have 4092 um, lines of memory to save. Furthermore, this memory is divided to 32 byte pages. So you have 256 um, pages and each page have um, 32 lines, each line to save one byte. And we are going to use the page 0 of the, uh, 80, 30, uh, the 8024C to save the master, lo uh, master data time logic and we are going to save this element. So in the address 0, we are going to save the version of this data logger. After that, we are going to use two address or two bytes to um, save the memory. Uh, how much memory do you have in this EEPROM? Just to confirm and to not over save because this can save uh, like in a way of rounding up. After that, we are going to confirm or save how how is the word size. This is not used in this example, but it can be useful in the future application. After that, we are going to save how many words we are going, how, how many bytes we are going to record. Then we are going to check the number of records. As we do have 4092, um, uh, possibility of record. I'm saving or I'm putting two um, two um, byte for this saving. Finally, the address or the last address that you can start saving again on it. And all of it will be used with the microcontroller to get this logic and then the microcontroller will use, it, will use this logic to save from page 1 to page 256. I hope you got an idea about this one. This is really um, ex um, detail explained in details in the previous tutorials. So you'd if you'd like to see the code behind it, feel free to take a look on it. Okay, so now we can jump to the circuit. So we do have our STM32F1 and it will be connected using PB11 and PB10, which is the I2C2 peripherals to the OLED screen. And also same wires will be connected to the image board uh, where we are going to use on not only the DS3231, but also the AT24. And after that, for our example purpose, we are adding a button to trigger a new record. So we are going to create this button that each time is pushed will trigger a new record. So you can use this a little bit of this function to record whatever event you would like to check in the time. After that, I'm adding two other buttons. So the PB13 is to view the next record. As we will have a small navigation in the OLED display screen, this one will show us the, um, the next record. 
After that, we will have the PB14, which will the pin PB14, which will show the previous record. Finally, as a next step, if we push both together, we will have a reset, or all the data in the um, in the memory will be erased. Okay, saying so, I think we do have an idea how the circuit is working. We can jump to the code. But before to jump to the code, if you enjoy this channel and you would like to support this content, just subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Okay, so first of all, let's quickly take a look to the circuit and understand where we are going to do. So this is our circuit here. We do have our OLED screen and this is our image board. Both of them are connected here to the wires of the I2C2 peripheral. Where here we do have our new record button and this is the next and previous button. Okay, so now let's take a quick look to the code. So this is the code which is already here and we are including only the data logger uh, library because this library includes already all the drivers and all the other libraries that are needed to, 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 to function. So first of all, uh, I'm, I would like to go quickly to these four functions, the reset, previous, and next, and record. This is a, they are very simple functions that are built uh, after the main uh, loop, so which just read uh, the uh, input, um, so the the input of uh, the pin, and just return one or zero. So it's a very simple functions for all of them. All of them are returning one or zero, depends if it's an input or high or not. I'm just creating this function to avoid any confusion um, during the code, and it's help quite well to understand quickly the code and to make it intuitive. Okay, so I will get back later on to this uh, to. Um, variable so we can quickly jump to the code so the first code that we are going to check so first of all we are initializing the uh, cystic function which is a function that will create the delays and also the digital input for this three pin pb12 13 and 14 which will be used as the imp input for the push button after that there's this function the i2c init um, this one is needed only only if you are not going to use the OLED screen because the OLED screen init function already have the I2C init on it. So if you are not intending to use this one or you would like to use UART communication or I2C, you may you will need to um, um, use this one. So I will keep it uh, commented because you are not you don't need it. So after that, we do have these two functions, the OLED init, this is to initialize the OLED screen, and this is to make a sc blank screen or to empty the screen so we can start using from scratch. After that, this is the logger init function. So this um, function is used um, to initialize the logger and you just have to add here the I2C that you are going to use. And just for the information, the I2C, I2C2 pin is PP10 and 11, where I2C1 is PB6 and 7, just for information. Okay, so we already have in the uh, this tutorial, the this is already initialized. So we don't need to use it for the moment. And after that, so we go to the next function, which is the logger OLED total record. So this is a function that will display the number of records that we do have um, already in the screen. So if we uncomment this function, save, build, and let me, let's how to say, yeah, let's load, you should see the total record. So this is the function that print the total record that you do have directly in the OLED screen. Okay, quite simple and easy. So next one, so we are going to check. So let's open this one and, and comment actually this one. And to show you the progress for the navigation purposes. So let me close this first. So this one will show, so this as usual, which I2C we are going to use. And zero, this is same as arrays, zero means one. Zeros will show um, the first record or the nav for just for the navigation. So let me save also and build. And also after that, load into the microcontroller. You can see you will start visualize the um, record number one, for the 18 next record okay 
So after that, we do have a small function here. So let me uncomment all this one. And we do have if get total rec. Get total rec means the number of record. So if we do have at least one record, we can start displaying say the time and the date so let's start one by one and here it's just for separation matter so we can remove them we don't need them so it's um, just up to to the user so if i remove these two one here so this one will show the first time of the record so let's again save build and load and we will see so you see the both lines and also the time i will try to zoom a bit let me check so the first record i made was a um, midnight and 30 minutes yeah it's crazy so the next one will be to display so let me show it here properly to display the date of the record so let me uncomment this one too and if i save here and load we will see also when the first record was made okay so that was uh, as initial um, display so now let's let's make it more interactive and more intuitive so this is our while loop and we are going to start for adding let, let's start with the navigation i think that's much better so i will remove here this one and uncomment this one and we do have both next and previous so let me actually i will need to bring this one here like this so to avoid the error so um the previous in the previous one so first of all it will take the record one so the one this variable that we declared here record zero and a check so if it's equals to zero it will stay zero else it will have minus minus we can actually remove this part after that what will it will do it will update the record one so it will update this one to um, minus one or plus one depends on the one that we have and next it will also update the record of number so if it's becoming 10 this one will become 10 and same for this one so it's it will be the 10th record same for next it will check the same so first of all next we'll check if it is the right um total record so if it's more than the number of record that we do have we don't need to go further because we do not have more records else it will increase the record and then update the navigation and also the record that we do have the time okay so let's save build okay no error and if we load okay so now we do have both um, this yellow and red ready to be used so if i push the red one you can see that my records i have done quite a lot of records at the same time but you can see the records moving forward here i guess i will have one yeah the next day 7 a.m so you can see that i do have further records on when i start doing it so i can when i use the yellow one you can see that the time is going back and there is no issue at all on the navigation to see how like um when i did make this record so this is quite nice and quick for the navigation itself i think yeah so after that let's go to the part where we would like to add a new record so we have seen how the the next and previous button works so just also to to show records uh, just a moment so this is the records for the navigation and total sorry info message it's just the message if you'd like to change total records to something else you can just change this one so if i put uh total only so and if i save here build and load it will be just a total so just um for uh display purposes so let me uh and come uh, so go back again okay so now let's go to the next one which is uh record so this one 
is more about adding a new record. So this small function will have to add a new record. So let's end comment here and here. So if we do have a record, first of all, we will go to use this one. So logger time rec means to add a new record and we will go and update the number of records. So there is one thing here. So if, so we don't need to toggle this one, this is not a part of the code. So if we do have only one record, so it's if our first record, we are going to display everything as it was new. Else we keep the display as it is and we add record. This is just a small part because each time we need to update only the navigation means if we add a new one, we are going to update only this one. So we don't need to change the order or the record that we do. But if it's our first record and we will see this one further when we reset this function, then we will add, add it as the first one. Okay, so let's save, build and load. So normally as a reset, we will go back again to the first record. So let's move a little bit to show you what's happening. So let's move forward. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. So we, we are in the record number 13. Let me zoom a little bit here. And when I push the record button, the blue one, please check on this one. And you can see that total number of record has been updated and also the number here in the navigation. And I can go to the record number 19. Okay, so you can see that's working perfectly. So now we can go to the last function that we are going to check. So let's go like, like make it small for everything. And we can go for this one, which is a reset function. So this reset function, we reset the memory and let me, okay. So this one will reset, uh, the reset will just reset actually. Uh, the EEPROM or the EEPROM master. Okay, so first of all, it will make the all the, the screen blank and will update again. I do believe this one is better than the stars. Okay, let me change it. And what we are going to do, so we are going to use this function logger reset. Logger reset will start everything from scratch. And then it will update all the other elements, which are the total number of records, the navigation, and if there is something here. Okay, so let's, okay, I move this one. I really hate. So let's save, build, and load. Okay, so we do have 19s and we can, as we have seen, record. So to, to reset, we have to push both previous and next button. Of course, you can change it as you want. So if I push both here, I have zero records so and I can't really navigate here. So what I need to do, if I add a new record, you can see that it's a one to one record in the navigation and I keep, I can keep increasing. You see, so I'm, I'm, I've been like adding a lot of uh, records quite quickly. So that's not really healthy, but you can see that with this function, you do have a very interactive and very quick to use um, time, data time logger. Okay, so I hope you really enjoyed this one. I had fun to make this one. And um, please let me know if there's any question. I'd be happy to answer them in, in the uh, comment section below. Thank you so much and have a weird day.